Here's an example of the work of Peja Drobniak. Peja Drobniak, supersonic seat sale with his cat Jinkies. How? These space bears make me do crazy things. It's been 20 years since a marketing campaign called Peja Drobniak's supersonic seat sale aired on television, yet these curious and at times bizarre television ads still provide nostalgia for people who might have considered the basketball player a cult hero. The reasons are not that hard to understand. The supersonics uh, no longer exist, so people can be tempted to dwell in the past. Then there's the acting, the weird narratives combined with a website dedicated to Drobniak. And of course, who in general doesn't like a 6'10 center from Europe who has soft hands, can play out on the perimeter and is a good sport when being asked to do the little things around the court. Yet there are some things that we don't know. Who's the mastermind behind these commercials? Can space bears help sell NBA tickets? And what does Predrag himself think about all of it? My name is Reynis Latis and I spoke with Predrag Drobniak and former Sonics marketing specialist Mike Belarev to find out the answers. Drobniak's maniacs. I like that. I is like that, that what you came up with funny? Let's turn the clock back to 1996. Predrag Drobniak was another promising center in the Euroleague, playing for Partizan Belgrade at the age of 21. Out of the last 11 games, the center scored nine times in double digits and recorded three double doubles as well. At that moment, that Partizan, we had so talented generation. I believe that in the, that period of the time, since Partizan won Euroleague in 92, there was an award in surrounding area in next Yugoslavia. I believe that we have so many talent in our team that uh, we could won another Euroleague in that year. But unfortunately, they didn't let us to play with, uh, you know, players for sure, Željko Rebrač, uh, Dejan Tomašević, Miroslav Beric. Simply, we didn't play. They uh, said that I need to go to workouts in uh, in, uh, in NBA. For me, I know workout, but for me, it was uh, completely something new. There was a few things that I went there completely un non ready, unready. I wasn't in a shape. We did a couple of workouts. In that moment, New York Knicks was strongly interested. I had a feeling because I spent whole day in New York. But since I was in a, under the contract with Partizan, Partizan not even thinking about let, let me go in an NBA. Partizan refused to do that because they are scared if I'm going to NBA, they won't be buy out for them. And that's how basically New York skipped to draft me. Page's debut came four years later in the 2001-02 season. So you had offers from Real Madrid, from Barcelona, from Turkey, yet you chose less money and went to the States. Do you remember? I do remember, I know what your question is going for, I do remember, I mean, I that year, 2000, 2000 2001 year, when I was my third year in, in uh, F.S. Pilsen, I really played, both in the year before, I really played good basketball, and then we advanced both times in the Final Four, unfortunately, both times we lost uh, from Panathinaikos, I decided, let's say, let's give a shot and uh, to, to the NBA, and uh, you're right, I accepted a huge amount of less money, three, four, five times less. By then, he was a 1998 world champion, had two Final Four appearances in the EuroLeague with FS Pilsen and had the 2001 European Championship gold to his name. He was a center who was knocking down frees, was top three in field goal percentage in the EuroLeague and also had a young Mehmet Okur as his understudy. In the 2002-03 season, the Sonics were 2-2 two and two against the Los Angeles Lakers and in two of those games, you in particular had a great performance against Shaquille O'Neal. Picking and popping, right? Screen and roll with either Gary Payton with Ray Allen and then popping far away from the basket. Like, do you think people appreciated that par part of your game? I think the reason why we, and why actually I fit in that team and the reason why they need me in that team because the uh, Gary Payton as a point guard, he is more confident and more comfortable playing at the low post. And they need some big guy who can stretch the yeah. Floor. That's the reason why they are uh, they traded and why they brought me in CL. If I would like to explain it to you, because you mentioned that Los Angeles Lakers and Shaquille O'Neal and uh, Kobe Bryant, you know, when you play against Shaquille O'Neal, you cannot guard him, you cannot beat him. I mean, it's, you know, let's beat him with the running, let's try to beat him with the shooting uh, from outside, since we, he's not going to get out of the paint, and he succeed in that year beating them a couple of times. 
Sonic Mania dates back to 1967. In 1979, the Sonics behind Gus Williams, Dennis Johnson and others became NBA champions. The Seattle Supersonics have won the NBA World Championship Series in five it was a franchise with strong local support, and the fans proved it. In 79-80, they set at that time the NBA record for average attendance per game of 21,725. Seattle's third finals appearance came in 1996. Coached by George Carl, led on the court by Gary Payton and Sean Kemp, they came up short against the Chicago Bulls. A few months later, Mike Bellerif joined the organization as an intern. Uh, went to college in Portland. And then after college, kind of knew a person who knew a person, and I got an internship with the Seattle Sonics. I was a community relations intern at the time. I did everything from organized basketball camps to take the players on appearances at, you know, at schools and autograph signings and things like that. That internship was a, was, was a great way to start. And then, you know, from there I got a series of different jobs with the Sonics in uh, within the marketing department. That's how we eventually uh, got into the uh, Drobniak's Maniacs business. By the time Pedro Drobniak joined the team, Mike was already the club's marketing communications specialist. That's where our two heroes meet. Every year, our marketing department and our ad agency would meet, you know, well before the season and we would come up with some major themes and then they would bring us a, a presentation. The ad agency is called Long Duty. Um, Tracy Wong and Pat Duty were the uh, were the founders of it. Amazing creative group of people. We would spend the better part of a day in a in a room, and they would lay out you know kind of like storyboards and and here's here you know here here are three ideas, and there was always one that was kind of funny and kind of a joke and kind of for our own entertainment and kind of for their entertainment. And this particular year. The other one, the funny one, was, okay, let's take our entire advertising campaign and let's focus it around our backup center who has a loose command of the English language. Doctor, I think I'm going to be not so, not so, not so. Because when fans buy a seat to Sonic's game, I will give them this free item. Get a free key bank, Redberry Talking Bobblehead, April 16th against the Sun. We thought it was it was great and it's so funny and so, you know, fans would love it and it's so entertaining. But we can't, we can't base our whole, like, you know, ticket sales and broadcast strategy and everything around this, right? Um, I manage the, the web content for the team. How do we make our website something more than just, you know, scores and here's where you buy tickets and, you know, all the same stuff that's on every other team website. And somebody said, well, why don't you just do the Drobniak's Maniacs thing, Maniac thing, but we do it, do it online, you know? The internet was 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 young, right? I mean, this is this That's is early a prehistoric age, right? basically. So, yeah, yeah, you know, that it, it it'd be a no brainer now. Like, of course, everything goes online, right? But at the time, we were like, yeah, you know, we could even put videos online, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> which is this, you know. <laughs> groundbreaking thing at the time, right? Yeah. So, so we started working on that. And um, that's when the the original Drobniak's page, which I, I don't know if you ever had a chance to play with it when it was, it's not, it doesn't yeah. it doesn't work anymore. I don't think out, it, it, if it's out there with all the flash and all the, the doodads and- Quotes about Robert De Niro, I think uh, you could click on the cat, if I recall yeah, correctly. Yeah, 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 all that. Uh, don't remember who was behind it commercial. I mean, of course, as a part and a member of Seattle, Seattle Sonics, I accepted that role in the commercial because it's all about selling tickets. Uh, I really don't like it because there's a com uh, commercial when we walk around the streets selling some uh, cabbage rolls and that was yeah. even more funny. Free cabbage rolls from Sonics. Free cabbage rolls from Sonics. Just like mom used to make. Today's Free cabbage rolls. The cabbage roll commercial on Queen Anne, uh, Queen Anne Avenue, I remember that, that was a good one. This website thing got so popular that my boss and my boss's boss said, hey, here's a little bit more money. You can go you can go film some commercials with this. And we're like, hey, awesome, you know? So we go and um, and we did a series of commercials that featured Peja and, and some of the other players. In that moment, I didn't know this commercial would go that way. To be honest with you, I even don't like cats. I mean, I'm more a uh, dog person. <laughs> I do not have a cat, of course. They asked me, like, what's your favorite actor? And I said, okay, let's put it Robert De Niro. I believe in the same year the movie Meet the Parents was released, and then they put it that jinxy cat and all that story. Yeah. There was there was no cat. He never had any sort of cat. So, you know, you tell him that, like, okay, we're doing this thing, and, you know, you have this pet cat, and, you know, he just looks at you like, 
what are you, what are you thinking? And then you put, you know, then the camera turns on and the, the guy's like, he's magic, right? He's like, he plays the role. It's, it's, yeah, it's awesome. The bizarreness of it all. I, I don't even know if I just made up a word. Does that word exist? But it, 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 you already it, it, mentioned. It, it, I don't know if it does, but it's a perfect word for it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, ambulance, come now. Because the Sonic's action from DC it is so hot, it burns me. But don't trust my words. See this. Ouch! Help! Spray me with the water. See, I'm not pretending. I will tell you the the Space Bear commercial was designed to be a a shark, a giant shark. And I remember the language on the storyboard, which which made me crack up. And it says Jerome James in an ill-fitting shark costume. There was no way to find a shark costume anywhere in the greater Seattle area that fit a seven foot two. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but even even a, even even fit him badly. So the best they could do was the bear suit. And I mean, you could see like his, you know, his, the arms came to about here on it. And uh, and then uh, the bear head didn't fit or didn't work or something. So they found an alien head. So it became it's a space bear. So just get, give you an idea of how, how loose this operation was. <laughs> For a two-time world champion, a Eurobasket gold medalist, and just in general, one of the best European centers of that generation, on some level, the four seasons in the NBA aren't as relevant as other parts of his story. That especially applies to something as niche as local TV ads. Personally, me, I don't like it. And then, I, I have to be honest with you, you know, but a few years ago, they, uh, my kids, they realize and they find out the bad, the bad that commercial and they are watching, laughing, and uh, set and set, but things already been done, and then, I mean, I had to be a part, and I had to talk about that commercial, but, I don't know, just talking about that, like, 20 years later, is just <laughs> confusing me right now. We, we had a lot of discussions around that, like, this guy's a great basketball player. I mean, one of the great basketball players in the world at the time, right? He's on the way up at that point, right? And he's, he's you know, we're, we're, we're really you know, saw let's have a real future for him with the with, with the team. We didn't want anything to be too cartoonish or too, you know, um, you know, if there's anything he wasn't comfortable with, then we, you know, we start everything with that. Like you're not comfortable with any of this, like you know, we'll we'll we can we can divert. We'll 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 move around something else. So I hate Kevin. Could you ever take into account what was the engagement in regards uh, to the campaign, whether it was ticket sales or, or you mentioned already that the website was hev uh, received yeah. he heavy traffic? How well did it do overall, the campaign itself? I wish I had specific numbers for you. I, you know, I, I do remember that we were a basketball team that was, you know, between sixth and ninth in the conference. And we were not the most uh, marquee matchup for anybody at that time. And, you know, we we would get these basically website traffic rankings unfortunately that that became part of like the the metrics of my job performance is how well our website's doing if you if you looked at the top it was you know hey the lakers are doing great look at their websites right now you know? and it was kind of almost it almost looked like the standings right when the drop me act thing hit that all changed <laughs> we went <laughs> right to the top <laughs> so, and, we, and it wasn't because our team was doing any better you know i mean so yeah and you had people that didn't know anything about the sonics or even basketball just wanted to see this goofy you know little video thing there are some hints that Predrag is a bit regretful about his nba career ending after four seasons two with the sonics one with the Clippers and one with the Hawks. Atlanta didn't pick up his team option in 2005, only for Drobniak to sign with Vittoria and return to Europe for good. However, he did return to North America and worked multiple years with the Sacramento Kings as a scout and he definitely would like to return. Did you know that, that I was six years with Sacramento Kings, like uh, international star? And I was a part of the group with Vlade Divac and Peja Stojakovic and to be honest with you, I would like, that's my primary object and primary target I would like to get back because I really love to do be part of NBA organization and I enjoy being like international scout. That's the my primary focus in upcoming months or years. When I stopped playing basketball, I besides that I was working with Sacramento Kings and everything, I didn't want to 
like you said, being recognized. I didn't want to every people, but still, I'm not trying to bragging about myself because the people always, when they stop me uh, in Belgrade, Serbia, at Montenegro, I'm always saying yes, but that's my previous life and I'm former basketball player. That maybe on some level, people in Seattle recognize you more as a basketball player than due to those commercials as you as you already said that sometimes when you type Predrag Drobniak the first thing that appears are those commercials besides a couple of uh, important games from Partizan have you yourself felt that in a way those commercials you know take away from your basketball career at least in the USA up no, no, in Europe no, everybody no, knows no not at all I mean uh, I don't believe that there was like even those commercials will start people start to seeing them like as like you a uh, long time ago, a long time after I stopped playing basketball, I quit with the basketball. When you mention CL, I, I would really love to CL have an NBA team soon. Yeah, and you could be a scout for, for instance, them, perhaps. Right? International be, scout for the they'll, Sonics. They'll be awesome. Looking towards the near future here, there's a lot of talk about expansion and, um, you know, we have we have an arena now and, uh, you know, all of those those things. It would it'd be cool to uh, you know bring Peja back or bring bring Drop Me X Maniacs back in some sort of some, some sort of fashion when the, when the team returns to town. I'm sure it would be uh, it would be a welcome deal. Commercial with him as a scout for the team. <laughs> yeah, hustle style. Be awesome. Scouting That'd Europe. Be awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yep. You know it, not so. Oh wow. Well. Hurry before I get my mind back. Thanks to Predrag Drobniak and Mike Belarev for appearing on this video and being so graceful with their time. In the comment section, we would love to hear your nominations for your favorite commercials with NBA players. If you haven't already, press like on this video, as well as subscribe to Basket News. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in our next episode.